for authors, filmmakers, entertainment, and all your listening needs. Listen now to Talk Now Radio, where no topic is taboo. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Talk Now Radio. This is your host, Royce the Redneck Radio Man, and joining me today is going to be Christine Day. And we're running just a little bit behind getting her on the air today. Um, I think I mixed up and uh, got a, one of her old phone numbers to call her at and seemed to have lost her fresh number, which is, uh, well, it's a really strange thing for me to do, given the fact that I talked to her just last night on the phone, confirmed I had the right number, and then I couldn't find the one I had last night. And the one I found I thought was the right one ended up being the wrong one. At any rate, I've sent her an email, and she's uh, supposed to be sending me her number. So that's that the worst should throw is a little bit late unless she doesn't get my request for the number. I mean, she got uh, my uh, question noticing, asking if the lines were fine. I should have asked for the number in the same email, but I didn't. So I hope she checks her email again. Having said all of that, while we're waiting on her to send the number, like to mention to everybody that I've been working on getting apps for the telephones. I've got one up for Android already. All you have to do is look under the chat room. I'm also working on apps for Windows, uh, Blackberry, um, iPhone, and, uh, well, all the po- uh, phones I can think of that I can find to get apps for to make them available so everybody can listen on their telephone while they're on the go. And I will be making a link store. You can download them to your, uh, to your phones. Available on my web page. And um, I hope this makes the service a lot better for you in the long run. Or short run or both. <laughs> Let me check this other mailbox and see if she sent that number yet. Pardon me, folks. And we have a winner. (coughs) Hang on. (coughs) I do apologize, folks. That hit me suddenly. Give me one moment and I'll have her on the line. Yes, it is, Christine. I want to let you know that you're already live and on the air because I started the show while I was waiting. And I'd like to apologize to you real quick. I don't know how I did it. I talked to you. I think it was just last night. I confirmed it. I had the right number. I meant to put it on a document so I wouldn't lose it with all the other emails. You know, can't see the forest for the trees. And then I I put it off and I didn't do it right then. And I come back today. I couldn't find that number. And the one I found was from an older email and it was an older number. And I was trying to call you on it. Okay. That's not a problem, Roy. So, at any rate, we we did get it hooked up and get it working. And we're live on the air now. So, let's, I guess, go ahead and move forward. And today, we're going to be talking about your most recent book, uh, Pleiadian, and it might be pronounced Pleiadian, uh, Principles for Living. Uh, you might want to correct me. I get the pronunciation wrong on that one. But uh, I do believe that you... Um, this is a like a sequel to a, another one you had uh, me and you interviewed about prior, isn't it? That's correct. Okay, now was that pronunciation correct? Pleiadian, yes. That's Pleiadian. Correct. Okay, just wanted Perfect. to make sure. Okay. Uh-huh. Well, I got to tell you, I've read your book. I found it pretty fascinating, but uh, it's an awful lot to grasp in one setting because uh, you got so many different exercises that. Uh, trying to memorize them, you'd really need to keep reverting back to the book. You know what I'm saying? Well, it's really important, Roy. The book is designed as a handbook and, a, and an awakening process. So it's designed to read a chapter, then possibly working with the audio files that come with the book, with each chapter so that you, 
you're not reading it straight out, you're reading it step by step and taking it in and receiving the initiations. And the initiations really are designed to align you back to really your own light source. So it's a gradual process, not something you sit down and just read you know, straight through. So when you do it that way, then it really becomes a journey in itself. Okay. Well, I, mean, I know each book is unique in, uh, in the way you read it, and a lot of people, I think, don't realize that because some books, like you say, they're meant as a um, step-by-step manual, you might say. Other ones are meant as a, uh, a story, kind of like a movie or, you know, a play exactly. or something. And, you know, the Pleiadians were wanting me to write this second book, and they said that it was such an important thing to bring information to us as human beings to assist us in really understanding about this time and understanding our own birthing process during this time and what's available and what we can access or reaccess and reunite to within our sacred natures in order for us to really navigate through these changing times. It's like we go through our own evolution and birthing process, and that is why, what the book is designed to do. So this is sort of like what uh, an opening of the chakras? Well, it goes beyond the chakras. The chakras are certainly impacted by the awakening process, but it's, 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 it, it absolutely encompasses and changes your chakra system and expands your chakra system, but it moves you into more of a, a multidimensional aspect of your own sacred nature so that you're returning back to your own sacred self and begin to align to the light of that divine aspect that we are and begin to anchor it through the physical cells of your body. So the body physiologically is changing. It's actually birthing into a more of a crystalline energy where you can hold a really high frequency of your own light self and begin to carry that in your physical body. And it leads you to be able to rejuvenate the cells of your body for self-healing of the physical body as well as being, be, as, well as being able to open and reaccess your telepathic abilities and those abilities for manifestation so it opens up different areas of the brain that we haven't used up to this point in this lifetime and it's a natural process of returning back to self so it's kind of like a Toss the uh, physician, know yourself. Yeah, that's correct. And it also talks about, which I think is really important, it takes away the mystery of the enlightenment process. And the Pleiadians talk about how we have been told many lies in this third dimensional reality. And we have this concept that in order to become enlightened, we have to reach perfection. But the Pleiadians talk about our human selves, our third dimensional human experience, and that as human beings, we're perfectly imperfect. We don't have to reach perfection in order to be enlightened, but rather, they say, we have to learn to accept ourselves in our imperfection and honor our imperfection and our vulnerability of being human. And when we start that self-acceptance, the enlightenment process is a natural unfolding within us. So it's kind of like uh, the enlightening process uh, does the finishing of the vending perfecting you might need. Exactly. And it's, it's, it, I, I like the way the Pleiadians bring the understanding of this time and, and of, of, of bringing back to us to honor our human selves, honor our human journey and all the mistakes and the things we've, the decisions we've made and the learning process involved in that. And rather, the mistakes are to be celebrated because they take us into deeper experiences of learning and not self-condemnation, but an honoring of ourselves in the journey that we have taken. And to me, that brings to us a liberation because we can actually allow ourselves our mistakes. We're going to continue making mistakes in our human experience and giving ourselves permission to have those mistakes in our lives and to honor ourselves 
in the experiences with love and compassion. Now, real quick, like I wanted to mention, your website is www.christinedayonline. And I also wanted to ask you, do you have any other websites besides that? You know, um, my Frequencies of Brilliance website is the Pleiadian work, but it is linked to christinedayonline.com, and that's the best website because that's where all the free products are, the free experiences as well as products you can actually buy and seminars that are available right now. And so Christine Day Online is really the best website for people to visit to access all the all the um, all that's available. Okay. Now you're having are you having kind of like a, a web uh, seminars of some kind to to go with the uh, Pleiadian principles for uh, living? Yes, we have um, seminars that there's actually one, a two-day seminar in San Diego um, on the 18th and 19th of uh, January. And before that, the two nights before that, are free lectures and light transmissions. And these light transmissions are where the Pleiadians come through me and I transmit this light energy out into the audience where people begin to have an opportunity to realign back to their sacred light. So the light transmissions are designed to create an energetic womb in order for you to birth and rebirth yourself and realign back to your sacred natures. So that is in um, on the night of the 17th and 18th, and all of that is on my website. You can, you know, and the and the details to the seminar are also on my website, on the st- in the store. So. Just know that part of my commitment to this work with the Pleiadians, and they're very very much wanting this, is that we have a lot of free products available on the website so that everybody gets an opportunity to experience and work with these initiating energies if that's what they want to do. Some people have money and some people don't have money. And the Pleiadians want, we do a, a free video broadcast, which is on the front page of my website, and it's it's available every second month, a new one, teaching tools and and um, to enable people to really realign back to themselves. So the Pleiadians are very committed to that, and I'm also very committed to free products for, for people. Now, why are the uh, Pleiadians uh, helping humanity at this point, though? Uh, is there something in it for them? Well, that's a good question, and many people ask the same question. Yes, there's... There is something in it for them. Uh, but actually know that the Pleiadians are part of a universal community team. So they're just part of a team to assist all of us here on the earth plane right now in, in really navigating our way through this metamorphosis that we are going through. And it is a metamorphosis. It's a physical metamorphosis through ourselves. We're going through a transformation, and so is the earth. It's going through a big metamorphosis from a third-dimensional planet to a fourth-fifth-dimensional planet. Now, the Pleiadians are part of a universal team, and part of their role is to support us in, in, in giving information to understand these times and tools for us to be able to transform during these times. Now, as a, as a group, a, 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 a universal group, the whole universe benefits from planet Earth going from this transformational energy to an awakened state, from a third dimensional illusion to awakening to our place within the universe and coming back to taking our place within the universe. If you look at it this way, each one of us is a unique divine aspect of the sacred whole, of what that collective consciousness is. And so... When each one of us comes into our awakened state, we begin to return back like a jigsaw piece, creating and placing our piece of the jigsaw back into the picture so that the whole picture is illuminated. And so everyone within the universe benefits from us, from planet Earth, coming back into an awakened state. So we return to taking our full role, our full place within the universe within the universal community. Now, the Pleiadians, part of their pre-agreement in this lifetime, as because they're incarnating, they're not spirit form, they're living out an incarnation on their own planet, part of their 
decree agreements, their mission for this lifetime is to come and support planet Earth in our transformation. That is part of their mission. It's part of their evolutionary phase as well, as as it is with many different um, life force energies within the universe. So they they gain and um, as part of their work, like many of us out here have a mission on this planet to fulfill in this lifetime. The Pleiadians, part of their mission is to be here on the earth plane to support us in our awakening process. And so they evolve through that. And that is their evolution. Knowing that the Pleiadians come from a fifth dimensional evolutionary planet, which is unconditional love. So they bring a very strong, powerful life force and loving energy to us. They carry that frequency and hold that energy around us in support of us coming back into our remembrance. Okay. And this is mostly just working with energy, uh, am I correct? That's, that's absolutely correct. They don't interfere and come into our energetic field without any permission from each one of us. And and the energy and the light energy that they transmit is designed to create an energetic womb around us in order for us to realign back to our own light. They don't bring their light to us. They open a space for self-empowerment for us to come back in sacred alignment to ourselves. That's the action of the energy that they bring, as well as information and understanding so we can begin to you know, reestablish a different relationship with our human selves. So it comes from a fourth, fifth dimensional energy of unconditional love to ourselves rather than a third dimensional energy of self-condemnation. So we are being asked to change this relationship we have with ourselves. That's part of our, a very big part of our enlightenment process. Okay, so I take it since you're mentioning love, that this energy is more of a emotional energy than it is a thought, or is it something of, of a blend, or what? Well, the Pleiadians work with thought transference, as do most life force energies throughout the universe. They work through their telepathic center of communion, sacred communion, and telepathic communication. So they work with frequencies of energy rather than speech it's it's in a light form of frequencies that carries this this high frequency of love and that's basically what the entire universe is made up of are these light frequencies that are transmitted through the telepathic center out to those who are going to receive it so that is, it's brought in its purest form. That's how it's transformed and transmitted to us and within the universe itself. So it's a, like a life force energy. That's correct. It, it okay. holds a very strong life force energy. Understanding too, of course, Roy, that each one of us have our own unique divine signature of this frequency that is not like anyone else in the universe. We are recognized through that unique frequency. So the Pleiadians can't give us that. They can open a space for us to align to our own. And, um, and as we align to our own light frequency, the cells of the body recognize that and begin to transform energetically. And that's where a rejuvenation of the cells of the body are made possible as we begin to open up into our own light frequency. That's why there are 27 audio files in the book to gradually open and align each person to their own unique divine frequency of light that creates this rejuvenation, recalibration of the cells so that we can self-heal, so that we can self-manifest, and so that we can come into a realignment and a sacred reunion with our own light self. And that's what the book's about. It's incredibly self-empowering. It sounds like it's very self-empowering. And, uh, you know, what I'm getting from this here 
is that it's not really so much like a, a religious thing would be like, a, you know, don't drink this, don't smoke this, don't wear this, or, you know, the dogmatic, dogmatic stuff, but it's more about worrying more st- uh, strictly about uh, how you deal with the emotions, how your, uh, your thought life is, uh, and how all this affects your energy body. That's correct. It's an amazing thing. And, and what also happens as you begin to open up to this, um, this frequency of your own light through the initiations is you come into a remembering and an understanding and a truth, almost like you can recognize what is truth and what is illusion. Because we've been living this illusion on this planet for lifetimes. So it brings you into um, an alignment of discernment of what is true for you and what is right for you. And you begin to follow a different path. It's like you begin to follow a path, a flow that is your naturally yours that will move you back into this natural abundance on all levels, which is our birthright. It's our natural birthright to do that. And as we align energetically in our bodies, we're actually moved and, and we're moving ourselves actually, but aligning up to all of that natural abundance that is ours by natural birthright in this lifetime so that your whole world begins to shift and you're, you're, the way you see and experience the world changes dramatically. Okay. Now, <clears throat> pardon me. I'd like to interrupt this show for just a quick moment here to let everybody know it's been brought to my attention that somebody that's installed one of my new apps on their Android has just informed me that the app is working great for them. So I would like to encourage people, if you'd like to listen on your Androids, get the app. It doesn't cost you anything. Uh It's ad-supported, so you will see ads on your Android, but it's a great tool to listen to my show when you're driving and on the go. I just had to throw that one in there real quick, Christine. I hope you can forgive me. Oh, not a problem. It's good information. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, I want to make sure everybody that catches this at, uh, say, Daily Motion or YouTube, that they know that they can hear me on their Androids as well. And then in order for them to know, I have to say it on the air because they don't come to my site. They, they uh-huh. listen over there. You see what I'm saying? <laughs> I do. I do. So, yeah, and I got a, a good listenership, so I know a lot of people, they uh, they really like to listen while they're driving, in other words. Uh-huh. So, at any rate, getting back to your book, uh, I think it sounds really great. I think people should work more with their energy. Uh, God knows a more positive energy would uh, just, you know, cover the world, in other words. It would be like, uh, well, when one person smiles, another person smiles, another person smiles, in other words. It, correct. The, that divine economy, which is so very, very important at this time. And I know there's a lot of people out there that are, you know, there's a lot of new energies coming onto the planet. So there's, it's almost like a magnification of the third dimensional illusion happening right now, where people are struggling a lot and really, um, you know, really having a difficult time in lots of different areas of their lives. That is very true, and a lot of it goes back to negative energy, too. I mean, we can well, t- t- Go ahead. What I, what I like about, you know, what the Pleiadians are saying about this, Roy, and this is really important, that now is the time the veils have lifted. So there's, yes, there's a magnification of the third-dimensional drama, but there's also an incredible opportunity for us to move through the veils and align to our sacred natures. So there's two things happening at once, and we have to choose whether we go into the human drama and be part of that drama, or we start to align through the heart center, and it's through the heart that we begin that sacred alignment back to the self. And I just love to just, you know, let people know, just hold your heart and breathe and let go, and just allow yourself to move into that heart space where you where, you know, things start to shift the moment you make that choice. Right. Now, when you're talking about aligning with yourself, uh, you're talking about what, your spirit self? Yes, your divine nature. You see, we have two parts to us, the human aspect, which is the ego mind, 
Then we have the, our, our sacred natures, which is beyond the dimension, and that is connected into by coming in to the heart center. So if you put your hand on your heart, which the heart center is the full chest area, and if you bring a palm of a hand just to the heart center and bring your conscious awareness to feel either the warmth or the pressure of your hand on your heart and take a breath, you're immediately taken into another level of reality, that connection to the sacred nature. And that's where you begin to align to something other than that third dimensional illusion. And as you keep coming into that, it gets stronger and deeper and you might feel a sense of peace or just maybe you'll come into an idea that can support you in what's going on in your life. Because the ego mind doesn't have the answers, but your heart, connecting to your heart, you come into intuitive guidance by your sacred self. And that's what the Pleiadians message is very strongly, is to take even five minutes a day and align to that, and you'll be amazed what solutions come up with whatever's going on in your life, something your mind could never have come up with, but it's always something powerful but simple that actually can really support um, what's happening in your life at this time. It sounds to me a lot like uh, what I read in the Bible. I think it was the Apostle Paul talked about uh, 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 walking by faith, I think was the terminology that was used. Absolutely. And you know what is, and I feel this very strongly, the Pleiadians talk about faith and trust, and they say it's nothing flimsy. It's something you can depend on. If you are willing to let go into your own heart, you move into this place that you can trust, and you can really know all is in hand as you align to that place. And I totally am very connected into the energy of some of the pieces in the Bible and the very deep connection that the Pleiadians brought me to with Mother Mary. And she has taught me tremendous uh, pieces and steps on trust and really letting go and just allowing that faith um, to be there as you take your steps forward. Okay. Now... Yeah, I know another lady named Claire Pappen who uh, wrote a book about her communication with uh, Mother Mary. Uh, it's kind of common, really, for people to have this kind of communication. And it's usually people like yourself that always say that they have this inner connection, this, uh, you know, they're okay with being themselves, I guess you could say. I think um, part of, of the awakening process <laughs> is learning to love that human part of yourself. And I think when you get to that point where that self-love can be, they're not 100% of the time, but a lot of the time, then the separation ends and you begin to have a lot revealed to you. And I think that's for everyone. It's not just for individuals. I think everyone can have the revelations come to them. And I do know, Roy, I had, you know, I was in Israel at one point down by the Sea of Galilee in the, in the town of Capernaum um, where Jesus had his ministry. And I got this very strong message just to stand on the lake of, by, the, by the edge of the Sea of Galilee and went down and stood there. And this light came from afar across the sea towards me and it was Jesus walking towards me. And I was just really overwhelmed by the experience and just fell to my knees, just sobbing, really, with, with the this love that from him, you know. And he said to me, and I was kind of expecting these kind of, I don't know, gentle words from him, but they weren't so gentle. He said, when are you going to take yourself off the cross? He said, you've put yourself on the cross in this lifetime and you've come here to resurrect yourself. When are you going to take yourself off the cross? No one else can do it for you. And that was a big turning point for me. It was an amazing experience um, having that with, with him. Um, and I didn't think I was worthy of that connection before that time. 
And when it happened, I realized I had put myself up on a cross. I had condemned. I didn't, so I hope she checks her email again. Having said all of that, while we're waiting on her to send the number, I'd like to mention to everybody that I've been working on getting apps for the telephones. I've got one up for Android already. All you have to do is look under the chat room. I'm also working on apps for Windows, uh, Blackberry, uh, iPhone, and uh, well, all the po- uh, phones I can think of that I can find to get apps for to make them available so everybody can listen on their telephone while they're on the go. And I will be making uh, links to where you can download them to your uh, to your phones available on my web page. I think I mixed up and uh, got a, one of her old phone numbers to call her at and seemed to have lost her fresh number, which is, uh, well, it's a really strange thing for me to do given the fact that I talked to her just last night on the phone, confirmed I had the right number, and then I couldn't find the one I had last night, and the one I found I thought was the right one ended up being the wrong one. At any rate, I've sent her an email, and she's uh, supposed to be sending me her number. So that's that the worst should throw is a little bit late unless she doesn't get my request for the number. I mean, she got uh, my uh, question noticing, asking if the lines were fine. I should have asked for the number in the same email. But I- For authors, filmmakers, entertainment, and all your listening needs, listen now to Talk Now Radio, where no topic is taboo. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Talk Now Radio. This is your host, Royce the Redneck Radio Man, and joining me today is going to be Christine Day. And we're running just a little bit behind getting her on the air today. Um, and um, I hope this makes the service a lot better for you in the long run. Or short run or both. <laughs> Let me check this other mailbox and see if she sent that number yet. Pardon me, folks. And we have a winner. (laughs) Hang on. (laughs) I do apologize, folks. That hit me suddenly. Give me one moment and I'll have her on the line. Hello, is that you, Roy? 